Welcome to Ebony, Ivy, and Time in the Kitchen. I'm Leona Dooley, and today we are spending time in the kitchen with family. It's just so much fun to have our family together and to uh, be able to cook in the kitchen. And today, I get to do the filming while my son does the cooking. That's gonna be so much fun. So, if you're interested in what we're going to be preparing, stay tuned. Do you like Chinese takeout? We do. And in fact, we probably order from the Chinese restaurant at least once a week, if not twice. And so, since all of us were together, we all love Chinese, we decided, or better yet, my son decided, that he was going to prepare a sesame chicken. Oh my goodness, I can't wait. So, let's see what the recipe looks like. Well, let's get started. We are going to prepare the marinade and we are placing in this bowl, because this is gonna be a double uh, recipe, we're placing in this bowl uh, the soy sauce, and it calls for one and a half teaspoons of soy sauce, so we're putting in three. And uh, you can see down in the bottom that uh, we placed in what's equivalent to two cloves of minced garlic in the bottom. And uh, actually, we ended up with way more chicken than we really needed for that one night but you know what that's okay because he had leftovers and so did we so um, it worked out great i can't complain at all so um, you'll see also there's our garlic going in and um we're using nice big spoons there and using the pre-minced garlic. We've got ginger and um, ginger oh, smells good and uh, that ginger is just going to be delicious once we start to add it into the, into the chicken. Okay, we're putting in some pepper and some salt. And uh, at this point, we aren't doing any tasting, but we're just doing it to taste, just kind of sprinkling in. As you can see, he kind of cooks the way I do. Now, this is the interesting part. We're gonna add in about three and an eighth. We're gonna say approximately a half teaspoon of baking soda. And since we're doubling it, that means that it's gonna be about a teaspoon of baking soda. You know, it's, it's really fun to be in the kitchen with my son. My son has been one who has loved to cook since he was little. And he's using a 1 8 teaspoon measure. So that's the reason why it looks like he's putting in an awful lot, but he really isn't. He's, he just had to do it more, uh, more frequently because he had such a small measure and did not want to uh, dirty up anything else. Now, we're also going to be adding in um, some starch. Uh, and in this case, it's going to be potato starch, which is something that, you know, I haven't used very, in fact, I don't think I've ever used potato starch. And um, he's also putting in some corn starch. And, you know, corn starch is going to help to thicken the marinade and will also uh, help to build a good crust on the chicken when it's time for it to be fried. So we've got cornstarch going into this marinade. So we've got about, we're gonna have about a cup of potato starch or two cups of potato starch. And we're gonna have a, that was a, a tablespoon of just cornstarch. My son loved to cook when he was young. And in fact, one time we were, uh, I was sick and had the flu. And uh, while I had the flu, he and his buddy cooked breakfast for me 
every day for the three days I was down with the flu. They prepared breakfast every morning. It was so cute. And uh, they couldn't have been more than 10 or 11. But I tell you what, those boys got in that kitchen and from what they knew, they prepared it. And they cleaned up because that's, that's how we rolled in, in our kitchen. Now, so um, anyway, he's taking out some boneless um, chicken thighs. And you can see he's first cutting them into strips and um, taking that and then he's going to dice it and he'll cut each of those strips into about three pieces and you can see we had two packs of chicken thighs because when we were walking around the grocery store it just didn't look like it was going to be enough to have one but you know what we ended up with quite a bit so that's okay so if you're serving a big crowd you know you got a football game coming or a basketball game or or the World Series, or whatever it is that's coming along, or you're just having some friends over, card night, game night. You know, this is a great recipe to prepare because it really is, um, the chicken thighs weren't that expensive, you know, even from Wegmans. And, um, you know, they, um, the uh, recipe goes a long way because you serve it over rice. So, um, it was delicious so there is the chicken and that's a huge mixing bowl so he's in the process of doing some cleaning because after all you know anytime you are working with any type of poultry meat whatever it may be you have got to clean 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 that's what you're doing constantly now he's mixing up that marinade and uh, the person that he got the recipe from is called she's on youtube and is called souped up recipes and uh, she's a chinese lady and oh my goodness she really does cook very well now this is this is funny i know i taught him that you are never supposed to crack that egg on the side of the bowl just because of the chance of uh, eggshells falling into your bowl but you know he developed his own little technique and uh, so he did it anyway. So, okay, so there we go. I'm fussing at him the whole time, but uh, he didn't pay any attention whatsoever. Now, what he's doing is that he's separating the, the yellow from the white of the egg and uh, getting the yolk. And so uh, what he's doing is that the, the white portion is going to go into the chicken and onto the chicken and the yellow portion is going to go over in, in the in the discard bowl now of course had that been my kitchen we would have saved that yellow see what happens when you don't listen to your mama it falls in that's what happens oh my goodness and he even had we won't say but he had to fish out an eggshell so there we go when you listen to your mama then those kind of things don't happen but that's okay. I, I I digressed. Okay. So he got it done. He got it separated and everything was ready to go. Good to go. He's so meticulous. I love it. And it's so funny because he and his wife have get in that kitchen, man, and they can find, they research those recipes and uh, they uh, come up with some delicious meals coming out of their kitchen. I mean, I am amazed at what all that they really take on some time to prepare. Now, what he's doing right now is just using his hands. His hands are already chickeny, achy, so, and they're clean. So he's uh, mixing up and massaging that chicken, trying to get that marinade into each piece of the chicken. Now, also what he's going to do is to, um, let that chicken marinate and it's you know he could have had we thought we could have done it the night before but uh and had it ready but we didn't so give your chicken at least anywhere from an hour 40 minutes to an hour to uh marinate and in fact we left it at room temperature and it was okay just cover it and leave it at room temperature sit it off to the side while you're getting everything else ready 
He's over there scrub, scrub, scrubbing. Getting all the gunky stuff off. Like I said, you have to be clean when you're hand handling poultry, any type of poultry. So, lots of cleaning, lots of cleaning, lots of bleaching. Now, I had to voice over most of this because in the background we've got uh, my hubby watching uh, television. He's into the golf. The girls were, in, were playing and squealing and playing with balloons and just having a good time. And uh, it was a little noisy, so rather than you're having to deal with that i just um decided i would voice over most of this plus it gives us a chance to just talk and uh so, which is fun so i'm enjoying that i hope you are too and getting to see a little bit about some of the things that we do besides and that i do besides cooking all the time i get to be mom so he is uh, wrapping that chicken with plastic wrap. And he's going to sit it off to the side. There we go. <sighs> now, this recipe, I have to tell you, for me is, is a bit, I won't say it's so much involved. It took a good, I'll say, hour including the marinating time, an hour to get everything ready. Other than that, it really wasn't quite that long. And yes, I kind of wandered around a little bit trying to get from place to place. And uh, we had been to McDonald's, so both of us have a cup there and ready to go. Now, clean bowl. And uh, in fact, it's another bowl that he's going to be using to uh, prepare the dipping mixture that he's going to put the chicken into piece by piece and this is the sauce that also that is going to go on the chicken once it it has been through its frying process and in this we're double frying which i don't do a lot of i know the brits do it the chinese do it you know and uh, i just hadn't done it so this is new for me this is new for me and I might have to try this in my kitchen to try and see if I can get a better fry because I'm telling you since I already know the end result that chicken was crispy I loved it so he's placing in honey and he's placing in about four tablespoons of honey now when he was preparing the honey I uh, was actually saying, well, you know, if you had sprayed that spoon, all the honey would have come off. Well, he's in the process of telling me, Mom, uh, by the time I get everything measured, there's all the honey will be in the dish. And so I had to stay quiet and just deal with it. <laughs> okay, he's adding in about uh, one, two three he needs at least four to five tablespoons of soy sauce and you know once you've done it on your own you can decide if you want more or less and in this particular bottle we were almost at the end so we kept it where it was and as it ended up it was a good thing we didn't just use all of the soy because we had to make another batch so we needed two batches of sauce so he made a batch and then I made a batch. Now he's adding in some um, rice wine vinegar and um, about two tablespoons. And this was the kicker, ketchup. Who would think ketchup needed to be in there? He needed five tablespoons of ketchup. He said normally had he had I not been videoing and you had not been in the kitchen with us, he would have just squirted. And that's exactly what I did when I, when I made that next batch. But uh, I wanted to make sure that at least we showed you the correct way. So that's about five tablespoons of ketchup. All right. 
right, so we got the whisk out. So he's going to need to uh, use that. And we need a few tablespoons of water. Now I'm showing you the potato starch flour because that was something I had not used before. Like I said, I'm going to link the recipe below so you will have the recipe. He had the coolest cast iron wok as well as skillet. You know, I'm going to have to get me one of those cast iron woks. That, and, and it wasn't very heavy. That was so cool. But you know what? We ended up going back to the regular fryer. This was a fryer that I gave him at Christmas. And... Uh, I'm always teasing him about, have you used your fryer? And of course, he says, Mom. So uh, anyway, we are doing the first fry on those, on those pieces of chicken. Now somewhere, there is the fry. Uh, this first fry. Now he's using a sifter actually to take the chicken out of the oil and just kind of shaking it real good to get most of the oil off. And you'll see his pan over there that's lined with paper towel so that everything can drain and that the chicken will be nice and crispy. This is the first batch and uh, it really was very, very crispy. You can see where I'm tapping it just to um, uh, show you just how crispy it was at the first fry. Now, this is what the chicken looks like when it's in the flour, and uh, now it's time to work on getting it sauced. You should see the device that is on top of the, the fryer, and that's called a splatter guard that keeps all the grease inside of the container. This is a really cool splatter guard because as you can see, it has a little handle on top, just like a regular top, and uh, it makes it so much easier to be able to remove uh, the items from the, from the stove. And the leaves are pretty. Stove, to be honest with you, it's pretty clean. Now we're in the midst of the second fry, and he's taking it out. He's he's got a thermometer in there just to make sure that his oil stays at least at 350, and uh, so that everything is nice and uh, nice and crispy and fries up very well. So we are almost finished almost finished so and this is with the second batch so you can see shake 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 got it going so let's get moving checking that thermometer again make sure it's just right because that we have to keep it at 350 right keep that oil at keep the, the oil right at 350 and he hasn't uh, even yeah, had any oil to this pan now, these are some of the chicken, pieces of chicken that have come out and after the second fry. You can see the difference. They're more golden brown. And uh, here they are after being sauced. They are very pretty. So he is in the process of adding the second batch of, uh, of sauce. And uh, what he does is that he adds a little cornstarch into that to help thicken the sauce. You'll see that in the recipe. 
that you have to do that and uh, bring it up to temperature let it boil and that sauce is going to be nice and thick and ready to coat the chicken so he's going to continue to coat that chicken until we have all of the chicken ready and all of the chicken coated now we did not sprinkle any sesame seeds on the chicken until we actually had the chicken on our plates and that was because the kiddos did not like the seeds and you know some adults may not like the seeds because you know if you wear any type of denture you may get the seeds in in stuck in places where you prefer not to have it and so uh, this just gave you an opportunity to make that decision on your own so he's finishing up the sauce and getting that sauce up to temperature it doesn't take long to bring it up but you don't want to burn it so you have to make sure that while your temperature is warm or it's nice and hot you do not want it scalding because you don't want to burn it and you're going to notice the color change as well so this is the chicken that's left that needs to go into the sauce that's the other half and all of that is going to get poured into uh, the sauce so that we can finish that up you know guys the evening or at least the cooking portion of the evening is almost over and we're going to have a delicious meal that we can all sit down together and enjoy I am so looking forward to that and plus it was a great time in the kitchen with my son and I so there I am I'm taking a look at the things that we have uh, to do and uh, looking at our chicken looking at how crispy it is and uh, having it waiting for that sauce to get good and hot so let's see what uh, our final plates are going to be now let's get this chicken into the sauce All right, he's placing the last of the chicken into that wok that we were looking at. And uh, you'll see he's trying to get all of it in because what's gonna happen is that he's going to very carefully toss that chicken around in the sauce. Notice my hand, you know what I'm doing. I'm tasting because it is so crunchy and so good. So look at the chicken that's been sauced and watch how he just kind of turns it over and over again until each piece of chicken and this is kind of painstaking to a point because you really do have to take your time keep everybody in the wok and the sauce that we made will coat all of that chicken so that's what he's doing he just continues to to turn and to turn and to uh, the heat still on it because he wants to keep that sauce very liquidy at this point until it is on the chicken so he's working with it until it's time to take it out and put it onto the plate Look at this chicken and look at this plate. It's gorgeous. And you can just see the little green peppers, the little green onions that we sprinkled on top. It's on top of the rice. And everything is ready for dinner tonight. So I'm so glad that you were able to come into the kitchen and I hope you have enjoyed this uh, video as much as I have in making it and being with my son and our family in the kitchen. So come back to the kitchen as soon as possible. Please subscribe and like this video and plan to see future videos, not so, maybe not so much with the family, but certainly with me at Ebony IBN Time in the kitchen. 
Have a blessed evening.